So this lesson, we have uh, a fair amount of terms that at the beginning of the notes, you know, I'm not going to read through all these, um, but we're going to use throughout this. And so let me just get straight to this. Um, a cumulative frequency table is a frequency table, which it shows you the totals as we go along. And so, for example, I have a bunch of data here that is showing you the raw scores on a quiz out of 14 marks for a number of students. And for a frequency table, if I look for a raw score between 0 and 2, the frequency means how many students had a score between 0 and 2, including those. And if you look at these, it's none of them. So there's, that's a frequency of 0, and which means a cumulative frequency is also 0, because that's the total of everything before it and up to here. So really, we start looking at a score of 3 to 5, I start to have a few things to look at. And there should be 2. There's a 5 here and a 3, and that's it. So there's two students who had a score between 3 and 5, so the frequency of that interval is 2. The cumulative frequency is 2 plus the 0 before, which is still just 2. Next, between 6 and 8, I should have 5. So I got a 7 and 8, a 7 and 8, and a 6. So there's 5 students who had that score. The cumulative frequency is that as well as anything before it, so it's 5 plus that 2, so a cumulative frequency of 7. 9 and 11, I should have 7. This is the mode here. So there should be 7 scores between 9 and 11, including those. So I see all of those. So there's a frequency of 7. The cumulative frequency would be 14. Those 7 plus the 7 before it. And finally, this is the two highest scores on this quiz, a frequency of 2, and so a total of cumulative frequency of 16. And that's how a cumulative frequency graph looks. Uh, sorry, table looks. Um, so now I have some data here. I don't really say what it is. And I'm, what I'm looking for here is essentially the five number summary, the minimum, the maximum, the medium, the Q1, and the Q3. Those are what we call the five number summary. And so if our data is already in order, which in this case it is, it should be pretty quick to find these, especially the minimum, which is the lowest value. So there's my minimum. The minimum is 10. And the maximum, which is right there, which is 40. Again, if it's everything's already in order from least to greatest, that makes it much easier to see. Next, I'm going to look for the median. The median uh, is the middle point of the data. And sometimes there's not one middle point. So there are a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 data points, an even number of data points, which means there is no number in the middle. In fact, the middle, you could say, is a tie between these two. Those two are both kind of in the middle. So what's the median? The median is the mean of these two, the average of these two. Add them up and divide by two or whatever's halfway between those. In this case, the median is 25.6. So in this case, the median is not, sorry, 25.5. Anyways, My brain is a little tired right now. Um, in this case, the median is not one of the data points, which can happen. So Q1 is the median of the first half of the data. It's the median of all of this data from here to here. The median, the actual median here is not one of those data points. So it's the median of what I've underlined here, the first seven values. Now seven's an odd number, so there is gonna be a value in the middle, and that value in the middle is gonna be the 16. So 16 is our Q1, our first quartile value. And the third quartile is the median of the top half of our data, these seven values. And because again, it's an odd number, there should be a value in the middle. In this case, it's 33. 33 is our third quartile. All of these values together we call the five number summary. So all of which we can see I have kind of talked about right here in this bullet point. And that five number summary is a common way of describing data like this. And we'll see it a lot. And again, it's, it's pretty easy to figure out if you have a small data set that's in order. It's pretty tedious to figure out like this when the data sets are getting larger. Um, so even this question here, which isn't a terribly complex question, it's going to start getting a bit more tedious, which means in upcoming lessons we want to find other approaches besides just this. Um, but for this, I want the five number summary. I have the cumulative frequency table already given. And so keep in mind, a value of two, frequency of four, means we can imagine if I was to list this out, I'd have the number two four times. 
followed by the number four seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got seven fours. And then I got eight sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. And instead of listing them all out, they're, the data is given in a table like this. So with that said, the minimum and maximum are always nice and quick to figure out. So the minimum value of my data is two, the maximum value is 10, and so let's get that out of the way right now. So the minimum is two, the maximum is 10. Okay, I'm next gonna go with the median. So the median is the middle data of all these lines, uh, if we put them in order. Now I can see there's 26 data points in total, which means that is an even number, which means there will be no point in the middle. Um, so I will kind of make a note here. The median is the mean of the 13th and 14th data points. Because if we have 26 values, there is no number in the middle. So the, the median will be what's between the 13th and 14th points of data, the 13th and 14th values. So what are those values? Well, let's think about what the 13th would be. And I can tell the 13th and the 14th actually, actually both must reside in this row right here. Because by the time we have this row complete, you know, we have our seven fours lined up in a row. By the time we have our seven fours written out, we have only 11 values so far. I need 13th and 14th. By the time we imagine writing out our eight sixes, we now have 19 values listed out. And so both the 13th and 14th data points must be in this row here. They m must be each six. And so therefore the median must be six. Because again, Remember, this means we have, again, four twos, seven fours, eight sixes, and so on. That's what this is showing us, and I'm far too lazy to keep writing that out. All right, so now we have our first quartile, our Q1, which is the median of the first half of our data. Remember, there's 26 points of data, so it's the median of the first 13 points. And so this is the median, or the middle, of the first 13 values. Which again, if you think of all the values, if you think of 13 values listed out in order, the one in the middle will be the seventh value. And so what is the seventh value? Well, if I look at my cumulative frequency table here, I know it must be in this row right here. Because by the time I finish these seven fours, I've listed out 11 values in total. So the seventh must be in there. So the Q1 must be seven. And Q3 is the middle of the second half. Middle of the, uh, I'll say, second 13 values. Which in this case is halfway between the 14th value and the 26th value. That is the 20th value. And I can tell by looking at my graph, the 20th value must be this very first seven that I've kind of highlighted here because of this row here represents five sevens listed out in a row. And just before we got there, we had 19 values in total. So the very next number must be a seven. That must be the 20th value. So the 20th value must be a Seven, and I just realized I screwed up the previous one. Um, right here, the first quartile, there's seven fours, but the value's a four. I apologize if anyone was actually paying attention at that point. I know I'm losing my focus. And so with that said, I got the min, the max, the median, the Q1, the Q3. All that's left is the IQR, which is your interquartile range, which is just always the third quartile minus the first quartile. And so seven minus four, crazy math here, we get three, there's your interquartile range. And I apologize if I, for the mistakes I made, this is actually the second time I recorded this and I'm sick of recording it, so I'm done.